Hello everyone, today's video delves into a provocative question. Is Gandhi as bad as Hitler? We will explore the controversial aspects of Mahatma Gandhi's life, drawing comparisons to the darker chapters of history. It is held to be reminded that the strongest might weaken and the wisest might aid. These words from Mahatma Gandhi remind us to be cautious about idolizing figures we admire. No one person is purely good or evil. They exist on a sliding scale of morality that ebbs and flows throughout their lives. And nowhere is that concept more apparent than the person who said the quote. Today, we take a look at the dark side of Mahatma Gandhi. Gandhi was born on October 22, 1869 in Purbande, India. He was the youngest child of his father's fourth wife. His father, Komchand Gandhi, was a chief minister or Dewan of Purbande. His mother, Putlibai was deeply religious, often fasting and splitting her time between home and the temple. Gandhi grew up in a home observant of Vaishnavism, which is the worship of the Hindu god Vishnu. His home also practiced Jainism and Indian religion with tenets of non-violence and the belief that everything in the universe is eternal. Because of this, Gandhi practiced vegetarianism or himself or non-injury to all living things, fasting for self-purification and tolerance of all creeds and sects. After passing the University of Bombay examination in 1887, he joined Samaldas College. He attempted to improve his English and Latin language skills by taking the University of London matriculation exam, which led to him spending three years in England. He returned to India in July of 1891. His mother had died while he was abroad, and he faced difficulty in the legal profession he had hoped to partake in. After some career struggles in 1893, Gandhi was offered a year's contract from an Indian firm in Natal, South Africa. He stayed in South Africa for over 20 years, returning to India only briefly in 1896 to 1897. While in South Africa, Gandhi faced racial discrimination, including an instance where he was asked to remove his turban at a Durban court. He was also thrown out of a fastless train compartment and later beaten by a white stagecoach railway when he refused to leave his seat to make room for a European passenger. He and other non-Europeans were often banned from European-only hotels. Mahathir Gandhi was assassinated on January 13, 1948 by a Hindu radical displaced with Gandhi's effort to achieve peace between Muslims and Hindus. His legacy lasts, as many still revere him as the father of the country. He is largely revered for his non-violent practice of social justice, religious acceptance and ability to bring conflicting groups to harmony. To call Gandhi again, it is healthy to be reminded that the strongest might weaken and the wisest may err. While Gandhi's work for peace and acceptance cannot be overlooked, in recent years, scholars have pointed out Gandhi's troubling and racist views of black Africans. South African academics Ashwin Desai and Gulam Wahid published a book, The South African Gandhi a stranger bearer of empire, which today some of his problematic beliefs and actions during his time in South Africa. He wrote about black people by repeatedly using a racial slur and believed Indians were infinitely superior to black people. 
he also wrote that white people were the predominant race. The scholars point out that Gandhi's work in South Africa was to fight for the rights of Indians living there. Still, he did not hold the same views on the black South Africans, despite them also being in a similar situation in terms of being discriminated against because of their race by British colonial powers. Gandhi thus stayed appeared and moved by the struggles of black people in South Africa. Gandhi believed that governmental power should remain in the hands of white people in the region. He also wanted racial segregation between Indians and black Africans. And some South Africans think that Gandhi actively worked with the British government to promote racial segregation. According to Desai and Wahid, Gandhi's belief in the superiority of white people and Indians over Africans, his exclusion of Africans from history, and his support of colonial minority, white rule all led to the conclusion that Gandhi was racist. But before we get into Gandhi's relationship with sex and omen, let's first dispel the widespread rumor that Gandhi and Hitler were friends. Yes, he wrote to Hitler calling him a friend and signing both letters as your sincere friend. However, both letters were an attempt to persuade Hitler to avoid war. Also, Gandhi notes in his second letter that everyone is his friend. That I address you as a friend is no formality. I have no voice. My business and life have been to enlist the friendship of humanity for the past 33 years by befriending humanity, irrespective of race, color, or creed. So, while this fact may seem alarming, it was likely a tactic to sway Hitler using a more familiar tune. In the second letter, he calls his actions monstrous and unbecoming of human dignity. At the age of 38, Gandhi took a bow of celibacy. He had already four children with his wife Kasturva, whom he married when he was 13. In his autobiography, Gandhi noted that he left his father's deathbed and went off to have sex with his wife. When his father died, and this caused him tremendous guilt. After his wife died, Gandhi decided that he needed to test his strength against his sexual desires. To do so, Gandhi shared a bed with naked teenagers, including his grand niece. Gandhi was already in his 70s at the time while his grandma was 18 or 19 years old. The goal was for him not to become aroused by them. This is a Hindu practice known as Brahma Charcha. Gandhi believed that perhaps the violence of a Hindu-Muslim conflict in Bengal was caused by a deficiency in his celibacy. So, this test was to see if he was solid in his steadfastness. Gandhi even considered wet dreams to be a breaking of his celibacy. Some of those around Gandhi advised him that these tests were not a good idea. But he proceeded anyway. And a couple of people even quit their work with Gandhi to protest his action. While Gandhi believed in the full equality of all men and all men's right, which he showed through his political movements. Some of his views and more personal actions illustrate a more complex misogynistic reality. In terms of birth control, and the belief that women should learn to resist their husbands and men to try to control their sexual urges. In his view, sex should only happen when trying to procreate. So, contraceptives were not the answer to giving women autonomy over their bodies. Contraceptives would only allow people to indulge in sex for lust, which he believed was harmful. 
He also believed in the almost education and all men joining the workforce. Still, he also thought that women should be responsible for all domestic activities in the home, including raising children. While this strikes us as very conservative today, it was pretty progressive during Gandhi's life. When discussing a woman's honor, Gandhi wrote, I have always heard that it is physically impossible to violate a woman against her will. The outrage only occurs when she gives way to fear or does not realize her moral strength. If she cannot meet the assailant's physical might, her purity will provide her with the strength to die before he succeeds in violating her. He demonstrated this belief when a boy was caught harassing two girls. Can they choose to cut the girls' hair off as a way to keep the boy's eyes off them? Gandhi was also constantly surrounded by female attendants who waited on him, messaged him, and even worked with the assistance of two old men he referred to as his walking sticks. One of them was Gandhi and the other was Abha, the wife of his grandnephew. Gandhi's work to achieve India's independence from colonial rule is undeniable. In India, he is seen as the father of the nation and treated as almost a saint. There are numerous memorials to him all over the country, and he is honored on the anniversary of his birth. Gandhi's action and beliefs have faced criticism recently. In 2018, Ghana University removed a Gandhi statue due to accusation of racism. In 2015, a South Africa Gandhi statue was vandalized with calls for his removal. Gandhi's grandson acknowledged his racist views, but believes latest statements show progress. Critics argue Gandhi should not solely be credited for progress in South Africa, as African resistance against colonialism predated him. They also point out discrepancies in his writings, suggesting he portrayed a cleaner image later in life. Some scholars say Gandhi was racist only in life, but became anti-racist later. Historian Ramchandra Guha credits Gandhi for empowering women in India ahead of United States. However, others argue that Gandhi's view on women still impact the country, noting issues like victim blaming in harassment cases are not unique to India. For the last time, it's good to remember that even the strongest can falter and the wisest can make mistakes. As we wrap up, consider this. Is Gandhi worse than Hitler? Share your thoughts after watching. The story is complex and your perspective matters. Thanks for tuning in.